Welcome back to the Friday Show. I'm Scott Jagow in studio along with Ray Pollock, who is once again at Del Mar with his loud shirt. Ray, where did you get that thing? Wait, loud? Loud? <laughs> yeah, it's loud. It's conservative out here. <laughs> All right. We're going to have a battle of Rachel Alexander versus Zenyatta in our minds, at least. But first, let's talk about the Pegasus World Cup. It's still a few months away. This intriguing item on the schedule 12 million dollar race everybody puts in 1 million dollars to have a stake a slot in the race there have been some developments in articles recently so where do you stand right now what's the vibe to you is this thing going to work or not i'm still a big fan of this it's a great entrepreneurial type of uh, event but having read the racing forum story that looked in detail at the 12 shareholders the, the 12 people that are putting up a million dollars to run uh, and looking at which horses that are definitely going to, you know, that being pointed to the race for those 12 shareholders, I'm starting to wonder if this is going to work because only a few of them actually have horses that would fit the conditions of the race. The others are going to have to go out and make a deal with someone, and I'm not sure that's going to be an easy thing. Yeah, you look at California Chrome, he's at the top of the heap. His owners have to be very happy about the situation right now because it looks like return on investment will be very good for them. You know, it depends. I mean, is Frosted going to go in the race or is he going to go to the Dubai World Cup? Uh, is Songbird going to step up against males that early in the season because this race is in January? Uh, is Beholder still going to be racing? Uh, are the three-year-olds still going to be racing? So you got a lot of questions and this is a division, the older male division, the target of this race, that's very thin, to be honest. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the answer to the, the frosted uh, question, they didn't buy a spot, so they would, if Sheikh Mohammed wants to run a race that would overshadow in some ways his own race, the Dubai World Cup, he would have to make a deal with one of the other uh, shareholders, and I don't think that's likely. So if, if I'm California Chrome's people, I'm sitting there feeling like somebody, you know, at a poker table, and the yeah. first four cards that were dealt to me were all aces. They're, they are looking good right now. But the other people who have entered this, at least some of them, they're looking long term. They think that this idea could become big and this race could become big down the road. So they want to get in on the ground floor. Saul Cuman is one of those people who owns Lady Eli, Exaggerator, part of Exaggerator, and several other horses. So he's looking at this. I want to be in on this now, even though he knows that it's very likely that he could lose money on this proposition. Because if you look at the numbers, you put in a million dollars. The top purse is or top prize is seven million. So obviously you're making a nice profit there. If you finish second, it's like one point seven something. So you're making a profit. But then it's break even at three, uh, at third spot, and then after that it's guaranteed two fifty plus some of the revenue from handle and such, which is only going to be about a hundred thousand a piece. So um, right now it's a losing proposition for most of these people. Yeah, that's why when this when this idea was first floated, I said they've got to make it a handicap, make it a true handicap with handicap weights, not weight for age. Because if you have a standout horse like we, I think we have right now with California Chrome, it's not gonna, it's gonna be very difficult to attract a full field of people willing to put up a million dollars. Let's face it, that's a lot of money. But so, right now we have the dozen. We have people that are willing to at least see where this goes. So we will keep following it. But right now, let's move on and talk about two horses getting into the Hall of Fame today. Oh, super Philly, you bet! What's the final margin? She might have won by 20! This is unbelievable! Zenyatta, what a performance, one we'll never forget! Rachel Alexandra and Zenyatta, what a battle they would have had if they were on the racetrack together at the same time, but what a battle they did have in the court of public opinion in 2009, going into 2010 after the, with the horse of the year debate. I mean, that was just crazy uh, what was going on with that. It was because you had two beautiful, great race mares who were competing at the top of the game, and now today they deservedly both on the same day get into the Hall of Fame. What, what do you think about when you think about Rachel and Zenyatta? 
Well, the first thing I think about is how sad it is that they never had a chance to meet on the racetrack because that's really what this sport is all about, is the best going against the best. And Rachel was the best three-year-old filly that I think I've ever seen. Zenyatta, the best older mare. And, you know, they were two completely different animals. One was brilliant, Rachel, of course, being the brilliant one as a three-year-old. Zenyatta being durable and tough and tenacious and, you know, having that you know, refuse to lose attitude. Um, the, the two races that I think of would be Rachel Alexandra's Preakness, where she showed for the first time that she could beat the boys. And for me, Zenyatta's defeat in the Breeders' Cup Classic, her last race, her only defeat, when she looked like there was something wrong with her at the beginning of the race. She was so far out of it. And the fact that she almost got up and, and, I was past the finish, and I thought she did get up. At least that's what I was hoping, um, but it didn't happen. She ended her you know, career with her only defeat, but it certainly didn't take away anything from what she accomplished. Yeah, I remember a, just a personal moment. I, I went to several races because I was living in Los Angeles to see Zenyatta race in person, and it was, it was breathtaking or breath-holding in some cases. I remember the vanity in 2010 when she was trying to run down St. Trinian's as uh, Vic Stoffer said, run her down on the money. And I swear, I was standing at the rail, that she was not possibly going to get there. And she somehow did it. And that's, I mean, over and over again, she just excited us, thrilled us uh, with those moments. And and Rachel in the Kentucky Oaks, when she just destroyed the field and was uh, in another universe, uh, you just can't make up a moment like that 20 lengths in a grade one race. I mean, come on. Uh, but what do you think, just for fun, what do you think would have happened on the racetrack if they actually did meet? As much as I like Zenyatta, because Rachel Alexandra had the tactical speed, I think, you know, no matter what the field size was, of course, in a match race, she'd win because speed always has the advantage. But I think if they're both at their best, I'm going to go with Rachel Alexandra because she has that, that, that tactical speed to get a jump on Zenyatta. And Zenyatta would be closing. Zenyatta, Zenyatta, Zenyatta. <laughs> Rachel Alexandra. <laughs> Blame one at a head. No. no I, I would go with Zenyatta. I, I just figure she somehow would figure out a way to get it done as she did 19 times out of 20 and then lost a head. So I would be in Z's camp in terms of that. What do you think? Take the poll on our website just for fun. Who might have won if they raced uh, together in the same race with other horses? And if you want to watch today's Hall of Fame ceremony uh, where trainer Steve Asmussen and Ramon Dominguez are also getting inducted, you can watch it streaming live at racingmuseum.org. That's going to do it for this edition of the Friday Show. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.